So, uh, great. Uh, this is the last panel. Um, a very interesting set of uh, uh, speeches, really, from different angles, looking at short-term impacts, but also longer-term changes. So let's just quickly go over some questions. And, and let's start with Krista and Ilmar from the Estonian uh, research that you just uh, uh, explained us. Very interesting, very interesting. My, my, my question is not so much of, of what you said, because I think that's, that was a bit of expected as well, that uh, um, uh, when the one uh, kind of a avenue of, uh, of communication was closed, uh, it took a bit of time for the uh, libraries to find their voice, to kind of find new channel, channels. Then they embraced it. Whether they liked it or not, that's another issue, but they embraced it. And when things are getting back to normal, it went back uh, slightly. So, and we will see now what's going to happen with a uh, with, uh, with second wave. My question to you rather comes from the theory of resilience. Uh, of understanding of whether organizational resilience is about bouncing back, you know, kind of surviving the crisis and bouncing back to the life before the crisis, or that the life has actually changed, the environment around us is so much changes that we, don't, we can't really bounce back, but rather we need to bounce forward. My question to you is, how much of what you witnessed in your research will stay and will be will be used now as something common uh, uh, for for the for years to come. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you for your question, Ilmar. Do you want to comment upon it? Uh, yes, uh, I think that um, in our days it's um, rather difficult uh, to say what is uh, staying and what is going uh, on. Uh, we uh, planned. Uh, in the uh, future that uh, we are working uh, on with this project and uh, see uh, what kind of uh, uh, branches are going uh, uh, on and uh, what are not. But uh, there are uh, some branches what we uh, suppose that um, they, uh, some of this uh, were actively uh, before this uh, COVID and uh, uh, COVID g gave to these uh, activities um, starter that uh, they began much more quickly to uh, develop. But um, as we, we are researchers, we can uh, say that uh, the situation in um, our days is such. But Krista, uh, I mean, you, you have conducted uh, uh, focus groups and interviews, and I mean, this is not the first project, you, you, you know librarians. Uh, so my question to you is, uh, talking to librarians, do you get this feeling that this is all temporary? Uh, or uh, it's, there's an understanding that there will be changes because of the crisis now that will remain for a long, long time? That has reshaped the way we understand the library work. Okay, uh, thank you for, again for this question. Uh, actually, I haven't conducted uh, focus groups, I have just uh, conducted the interviews, but uh, anyway, uh, if I think about uh, this kind of standpoints or of uh, the different librarians, then at the moment, uh, as also Ilmar said, it is a little bit difficult to assess whether this kind of changes they remain or they will go, because at some point we ha may have this kind of feeling that, okay, maybe this kind of change is really good, but uh, when the situation is normalizing in a way, uh, and uh, as you said before, that the outbreak is not over yet, actually, when the situation is normalizing, we might not know what is staying or what is going. So this is actually, yes, indeed, a question for the further research. And uh, at the moment, yes, we are still observing the situation in Estonia. And also uh, in the frames of this project, I have also already started conducting interviews with uh, Swedish librarians and museum professionals. Mara, but if you put that uh, together with what you were saying about a slightly longer term uh, perspective on uh, the, uh, the trends and tendencies in Latvia, do you, do you think that the, what we've seen now in the past half a year will have a long-term impact on the way of uh, uh, the way that libra libraries work or it is rather temporary in nature okay can you hear me yes 
Yes, okay. Uh, I think, yes, of course, uh, because this uh, COVID time uh, have uh, given um, uh, for us um, um, some, uh, uh, some courage and some um, uh, to um, fulfill uh, some dreams uh, th that we could not uh, fulfill if the COVID uh, was not. So, for example, uh, free, uh, free um, access to many um, uh, digital resources. Uh, also, this um, about this project, what Alina Putz told already in the first session, uh, I, it's very important because people cannot go to the library physically. They can reach uh, these information resources uh, in, in the internet, in the digital way. Kiedra, uh, from your perspective, um, you were um, sharing the results uh, also uh, of users' feedback to the library service. Um, and it's very similar to what we've learned here in Estonia, that actually while there are problems and, and, and uh, there's never enough money for books and, uh, um, and the salaries are low, as also Mara was mentioning, but still, on the other hand, the, 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 um, uh, the user feedback is, ex is, is comparatively you know, very, very positive. So my question to you is, do you think that now, in the last, let's say, the developments of the last uh, uh, four or five months, uh, uh, six months, with uh, being, um, uh, libraries being closed and the libraries have to find these new, uh, new ways of actually being in contact with their audiences, do you think that that will have a positive impact on the, on the feedback uh, by the users or it might uh, make things more complicated for libraries? Mm might happen a few scenarios, I think, uh, because, uh, mm, yes, we were ready. We had e-services because National Library is responsible for um, few national-wide uh, uh, information systems related with e-books, uh, with um, e-heritage. Uh, we had services and we were ready to give it to our users, even in small libraries, because we work as one network. But still, not all services were available during the COVID time. Uh, we are happy to say that we were first institu institutions who closed uh, their services, uh, but we were also first institutions who, which opened their services. They invited users to come and we were ready for this and we didn't have to, to have one week or two weeks to open and et cetera, and et cetera. And we as National Library did a great example and we're helping to, to, to libraries to do this. But concerning uh, feedback of our users, uh, we need to measure, of course, <laughs> uh, and uh, but what we saw that our e-services were used very very widely especially um, these kind of um, online things like podcasts various uh, uh, non-formal education uh, uh, short videos uh, it, it was even shown not only through our channels but also through media channels from through national media channels so uh, we People saw us and they didn't think that we were closed. We were open, but in another way. But how they find it, how what would be their back, I think we need to measure, but I hope that it would be quite it will be quite high. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, if all of you can answer this question, maybe some of you, but 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 I will direct my question to Mara because you gave a really an, uh, um, this kind of an overall picture of uh, different types of libraries and, and the challenges they've they've seen so far in the past uh, three years. And my question is is um, is risk management about risk management. We know that in many many cultural institutions, risk management has been. Uh, uh, very poorly done. This has often been seen as something that comes after everything else, people not really taking it seriously. This is something when you ever, you know, write a project, this is you write it uh, very last and you use very, you know, uh, 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 stamp uh, 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 words for the risk management plan. My question is, do you think that now, with yes, naturally nobody could uh, predict uh, pandemics as such, but do you think that now 
uh, libraries in the future will pay more attention to these risk management and risk aversion scenarios of being ready for different futures, uh, being ready to offer services even when the physically it's not possible, etc. Or do you think that uh, as, as soon as this pandemic is over, we are back to business as usual? Uh, I hope yes. It depends on, on people. Some people are planning their future, some pe people are not. Uh, at the moment, I think many librarians have a very big fear to plan everything in for the ne next year. For example, no one knows what will happen in the next year, what will happen with events, what will happen with uh, professional development, how can we educate uh, our readers, uh, educate uh, ourselves, no one knows what will happen, but despite on this, I hope that uh, librarians will pay more attention to these unpredictable situations and to be more ready for this. I hope. <laughs> yes, Kedra. Yes. Can I add? Oh, please, Kedra. Yes, and then Krista. Kedra. Sorry. <laughs> um, what we understood that we cannot lose this chance. The crisis, the all this COVID thing showed us that this is a chance for us. We cannot lose it. So uh, I believe that it, it, it made us stronger and uh, we are ready for even uh, not bad, more bad pandemics, of course, but we are ready for such situations and we are used to crisis. Libraries <laughs> do not live such a, a, an easy life. Krista. Mm -hmm. What I was just thinking was that uh, actually when we talk about unforeseeable situations or circumstances, then it is really difficult to foresee a pandemic, actually. <laughs> when we think that the last time uh, when uh, this current pandemic is actually compared to the uh, great uh, Spanish, uh, Spanish flu uh, in uh, 1918, then it was more than year, 100 years ago. So it is really difficult to foresee that kind of times. But yes, I think that next time we will be prepared. Uh, but probably this is a very nuanced question, for example, for, for a library. But for example, if you take an ex example of museums, then this is not really true. Because yes, while they might not have been, you know, a pos uh, it's not possible to foresee pandemics, but there are a number of different uh, events that might take away uh, your foreign visitors. When it was the uh, Russian annexation uh, of, uh, of Crimea and uh, Russian tourism uh, uh, was collapsed or when uh, uh, volcanoes were erupting in, in, uh, in Iceland. So, Whatever the reason, if you build your business plan just purely on tourism and tourism goes away for one reason or another, then the fact uh, might be unforeseeable, but you need to have those risk assessment plan and risk uh, management plans. But again, this is much more difficult uh, when uh, libraries need to close completely down. You're absolutely right. Ilmar. Yes, uh, uh, we must um, see a uh, bigger uh, picture. In Estonia, uh, is um, uh, in our days um, going uh, a municipality reform, and um, I think that um, uh, in um, uh, several uh, years in future, the number of uh, libraries is. Um, going down. Some libraries are uh, closed and some libraries are profiled. They are, uh, they began to uh, be as a community centers, as a cultural centers. And uh, it uh, uh, depends uh, very much um, as a library is um, staying uh, as a library or uh, the Liberian things are very small in this uh, uh, cultural center. That um, this um, uh, COVID times uh, makes uh, librarians, if we say in general, uh, much more stronger to in future uh, developments uh, say the strong uh, words and uh, stay in uh, librarianship positions. 
Now the last question I have quickly before the other session ends and they will join us and we make the last words. It's something that I, 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 I felt or I, I heard from uh, Krista's uh, uh, presentation and actually there was a question about that and Krista as a, as a fantastic panelist already answered uh, to that particular uh, question but since not everybody has opened that question, let me ask this again. You mentioned FOMO, fear of missing out. You, you also uh, mentioned that, you know, uh, everybody were looking very carefully what others are doing and, you know, uh, what are kind of a looking at good practices, but also uh, bad practices, you know, what doesn't work. So my question to all of you, uh, uh, Mara, from, uh, from Latvian perspective as well, and Kiedre, uh, how much during the crisis, during it, not now after and, uh, and here in the, in the uh, congresses and, and, and trainings, but during the actual pandemics in March, April, April, uh, May, how much did actually the libraries share those experiences? How much did they openly discuss it, both good and bad practices, or everybody was so, uh, 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 so concentrated, focused on their own problems that nobody had time and energy to do that? Mara, what about uh, Latvia? Okay, uh, I, I forgot a little bit question, but I will try to answer. Uh, I see think that in the coming time, uh, thinking about the end of this year and also for the next year, the uh, key word is collaboration. We need to collaborate more than ever. We need to support each other and uh, what uh, comes to libra libraries and librarians in Latvia, we was very close, we uh, gave support to each other, we, we discussed all problems with e each other. Um, there was many experience exchange online and uh, by telephone, but I think uh, on, uh, thinking about the next year, year, we have to do more collaboration and more support to each other. That, that is about what I think. Very good. Kiedra, did, how, how much did the Lithuanian library share uh, during the crisis? Yeah, actually we shared uh, not only with libraries, we shared our experience about uh, remote work even with ministry of culture with other uh, culture institutions of course we didn't have time for big conferences big seminars big talks but uh, as a methodic center uh, when we closed the library we shared uh, the methodics we uh, uh, recommended to libraries uh, also when we opened the library we created some methodics for uh, smaller libraries and they were they were waiting for this so uh, what we could, I think we did, but maybe we could do more, but of course, uh, maybe next time. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I guess from your research, uh, what you mentioned, I, I did get the feeling that in Estonia, there, there is really this, the, uh, that li libraries and librarians really expect uh, more collaboration, more uh, um, sharing uh, of experience with each other. Do I understand it correctly, Krista? Yes, I think this is absolutely correct understanding. And uh, for those who did not manage to go to see the answer of mine in, under my our presentation, then I can refer to the um, uh, recording in YouTube uh, about the day called about the event uh, called the uh, Library Space a Service organized by the Estonian Library Association's working group on fresh approach. So this was an event uh, that was uh, probably very much awaited and, and, uh, and cherished by Estonian librarians, which was organized in the beginning of May. So Wonderful. That, was, that was quite something. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, and we are now getting to the close of it. Um, can I ask uh, Tuliki and Jorma to join me? We just started. Doesn't it feel that? We just, we just said the opening yes. words and now we are here. Uh, we had uh, throughout the day um, around 140, I think the top was 150 people. 
Uh, as I said, uh, you can now go and have a look at it again, because this was so interesting. And then you have a look at the other panel that you missed. And then if you missed anything else, you can go over and over it again. And I really, really recommend to watch those short videos as well that we've shown, uh, been, been uh, showing you um, uh, during our breaks. They are really short, really inspirational uh, for you uh, to follow as well. Um, what did you learn from, uh, from your, uh, your panel session there? Anything you take with you? We had uh, two uh, great panels uh, on the Session B channel. And I think that the most valuable thought uh, that was expressed several times was that uh, library is not the bookshelf. It's not only a, a set of catalogs uh, or uh, reading rooms. It's um, something much more complex. And, and when it's so complex, then we also need a very smart toolkit for the future to develop it. And I think that each of these topics would deserve a single day to go through that. Uh, from the cooperation and collaboration until the open science and open data, it's all very inspirational and, and hopefully also was useful to you as, uh, as our audience. I, I, th I understand that you are now uh, uh, an international expert on open data and open access. <laughs> I'm very far from that, but I know at least uh, uh, one hour more than I did before, and it's a value as well. Uh, because I learned uh, RDA, uh, A A S A A R C two, oh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for our Lithuanian colleagues, I learned it, uh, or Latvian colleagues. Uh, anyway, uh, really interesting, really different perspectives. And what I take uh, a metaphor that I take away from me is the uh, credit card. That uh, whatever is on your credit card, it's it's never nearly enough. Is is the value of your library card? Uh, I would like to thank everyone who participated, who spoke, who made short videos. Also, thank you, Jorma, and thank you, Ragnar, and thank you, my colleagues from Estonian Librarians Associations. Thank you. <laughs> and Super work, yeah, people. <laughs> we, are, we are not alone here. Yeah. And I have a, a flag of a Congress. It was made by Lithuanian colleagues uh, some years ago. You can open it. It was... <laughs> okay. It's turn. Turn, turn, turn. Oh, this way. Okay. We can, <laughs> you can go this way. We can A little bit. A little time. This, yes. this one. Nice so, um, we are actually uh, worried about that uh, this Congress was made uh, as a virtual Congress, but actually I have seen uh, news from yesterday from Lithuania. I think we made a really right choice. And this flag will go to uh, Lithuania, maybe by post or maybe... No, we had an idea. Actually, yes. uh, we asked uh, Krista. Krista, uh, we asked Krista is uh, from Pernu, our summer capital, the marketing director of the library in Pernu. And why we give this to Krista is because Pernu is halfway between Tallinn and Riga. So the flag goes first to Pernu, then Riga, and then it's already halfway to Vilnius. So please take it to our yes. Lithuanian colleagues. Yes. Okay. okay. Very good. <laughs> okay, and thank you all, and hope to see you in five years. See you in five years. Bye. Bye, -bye.